Napoleon Hill was a journalist and writer. He was called in to visit Andrew Carnegie, one of the richest people in history. Andrew said to him, I will open the doors to the 500 richest people in America so you can interview them, take all of their information and put it into a series of books to help other young people be successful much faster. But I'm not going to pay you a penny. What will you do? 46 seconds later, Napoleon said, okay, I'll do it. The result was a 250 page book called Think and Grow Rich. It's organized into the 13 steps to riches. Step one, desire. Not hope, not a wish, a strong, burning desire. This is perhaps the most important step, which is why Napoleon has put it at the beginning of the book. The six steps to transform desire into financial gain are one, fix in your mind the exact amount of money you desire. Two, determine when you intend to start giving for the money you desire. Three, establish an exact date when you intend to possess the money you desire. Four, create a plan for carrying out your desire, then put it into action. Five, write down the amount of money you desire, the date you'll get it, and your plan to get there. Your statement could be, I desire $1 million. I will attain it on September the 2nd, 2022. My plan is to sell 1 million pickles on a stick to wealthy tourists seeing the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Six, read your written statement aloud twice a day. See and feel yourself already in possession of the money. Step two, faith. Faith is a strong, emotionally charged belief. Faith is a state of mind which may be induced or created by affirmations or repeated instructions to the subconscious mind through the principle of auto-suggestion. You develop faith after you have mastered the 13 principles in this book, but especially auto-suggestion, which we'll learn from step three, auto-suggestion. Auto-suggestion is the agency of control through which an individual may voluntarily feed his subconscious mind on thoughts of a creative nature or, by neglect, permit thoughts of a destructive nature to find their way into this rich garden of the mind. It supports the first two principles of desire and faith. Before you move on to the next steps, repeat the six steps from step one. When reading aloud your written statement, Napoleon stresses that you attach feeling and emotion to it because your subconscious mind only acts on thoughts that are emotionally charged. I will become a millionaire selling pickles on a stick means nothing if I don't have any faith or desire to do so. Step four, specialized knowledge. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather do 10 jobs valued at $10 an hour or one job valued at $100 an hour? A brain surgeon gets paid much more for his specialized knowledge rather than a jack of all trades with general knowledge who does plumbing, bricklaying, and gardening. Henry Ford was called an ignorant pacifist and summoned to court. They asked him questions like, how many soldiers did the British send over to America to put down the rebellion of 1776? Henry replied, if I should really want to answer the foolish question you have just asked, or any of the other questions you have been asking me, let me remind you that I have a row of electric push buttons on my desk, and by pushing the right button, I can summon to my aid men who can answer any question I desire to ask concerning the business to which I am devoting most of my efforts. Now will you kindly tell me why I should clutter up my mind with general knowledge for the purpose of being able to answer questions when I have men around me who can supply any knowledge I require? That's the power of a network. Successful people leverage the specialized knowledge of other people. Andrew Carnegie admitted he didn't know much about the technical side of his steel business, but he didn't need to because he had staff with that kind of knowledge. Step five, imagination. It has been said that man can create anything which he can imagine. Imagination is necessary to turn desire into real world results. A real practical example I've seen of using imagination to gain riches was when I was heavily involved in the ebook publishing community. Amazon paid publishers money for each page a reader read. So if I had a 100 page book and 50 pages were read, I would get say one cent a page and 50 cents for 50 pages. Someone used their imagination and came up with the idea of translating the book into multiple languages, then including the translations in the English version. Without getting into the technicalities of how Amazon paid publishers, they were able to use this strategy to 10 times their profits. Regardless of ethics, it's a clear example of how imagination can make you wealthy. Step six, organized planning. If you are to get rich, you need a plan. Here are four things to keep in mind. Create a mastermind group or team, which is a coordination of knowledge and effort in a spirit of harmony between two or more people for the attainment of a definite, <coughs> for the attainment of a definite purpose. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Two, decide what you can offer your mastermind team members in return for their cooperation. No one wants leeches that pick the brains of others without providing any value. Three, meet with your team members twice a week and more often if possible. 
and four, maintain harmony between yourself and every team member. These four things will help turn your plan into action. If a plan doesn't work, replace it with a new plan. Step seven, decision. People who fail to make money are easily influenced by the opinions of others. Family and friends will often hold you back whether they are well-intentioned or not. Make your own decisions. People who fail have a habit of reaching decisions slowly and change them too often. Entrepreneurs may know this as shiny object syndrome, where a new idea or trend captures your attention and you end up straying away from your original goal or decision in this case. I've failed at creating niche sites, flipping domain names and building a book publishing business because I never fully committed to a definite decision. Napoleon analyzed hundreds of millionaires and found that every single one of them had the habit of reaching decisions quickly and change decisions slowly, if and when they were changed. This channel is becoming more and more successful because at the beginning of the year, I made a definite decision I would stick it out to the end of the year and reach 10,000 subscribers. Right now, we're at 16,000 with two months to spare. Step eight, persistence. There's not much more to say here. Rich people persist. The more intense your desire, the more you're likely to persist. A mastermind group will also help you. Colin L. Sanders, founder of the fast food chain KFC, failed 1,009 times before he sold his recipe for Kentucky Fried Chicken. Step nine, the power of the mastermind. To refresh your memory, a mastermind is a coordination of knowledge and effort in the spirit of harmony between two or more people for the attainment of a definite purpose. The biggest benefit of masterminds is synergy. One plus one equals three. This is the same concept as Stephen Covey's win-win principle. The minds within the group become something more than the sum of their parts, so greater things can be achieved. Step 10, the mystery of sex transmutation. Destroy the sex glands, whether in man or beast, and you have removed the major source of action. A bull becomes docile as a cow after it has been altered sexually. Sexual desire is one of the most powerful human desires. Men with sexual drive develop imagination, courage, willpower, persistence, and creative ability. It's a powerful driving force that can be channeled into other creative pursuits. One of America's most successful businessmen admitted that his attractive secretary was responsible for most of the plans he created. Her presence lifted him to heights of creative imagination. Step 11, the subconscious mind. Positive and negative emotions cannot occupy the mind at the same time. One or the other must dominate. It is your responsibility to make sure that positive emotions constitute the dominating influence of your mind. The seven most powerful positive emotions are desire, faith, love, sex, enthusiasm, romance, and hope. Napoleon encourages us to form a habit of applying these positive emotions. Maybe you could show love today by hugging someone. Step 12, the brain. I don't know what Napoleon was smoking when he wrote this chapter. If there's a point in the book where a reader will stop reading, this is it. But anyway, my, my understanding is that there's this collective mind that we can all tap into by irradiating the correct frequency from our brains, or something like that. His explanations seem to be in line with ones of psychedelic experiences. I don't know what else to say about this one. If you've read the book, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this. There's one final step called the sixth sense, but according to Napoleon, the sixth sense defies description. It, can, it, can, blah, 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 blah. it cannot be described to a person who has not mastered the other principles of this philosophy, because such a person has no knowledge, and no experience with which the sixth sense may be compared. I simply can't master any practical wisdom from this chapter either, so with that said, let's review the 12 steps to riches we covered in this video.